Hey guys, Alicia from Love Letter Generation. Hope you're all doing well today. I ended up, ended up receiving a request on how I die cut my glitter cardstock. So I thought I would do a simple and quick little like tutorial on how I die cut out some pretty gold glitter card stock that I recently hauled from Spotlight and using this cute little button die that I recently received from AliExpress. So what I've done so far is I've already cut out a whole heap of patterned cardstock um, buttons, paper buttons, and I'm using the gold glitter cardstock to place on the backs of these just to make them a bit more sturdy and I also love that that pop of sparkle that um, that you see through them as well and then I had an idea to also pop some of this gorgeous gold thread that I have through the button embellishments so then they sort of end up looking like this which is really cute so this already has some of the gold glitter card stock just um, peeking through there I don't know if you guys can see it or not and then some of the gold thread and I just ended up using a variety of different patterned papers so I'm pretty sure I've used some of my garden party paper and I think maybe a little bit of oh might be market square market square garden party and simple stories happy hearts So um, the die cut machine that I end up using is a Kayser Craft die cut machine, which I'll share with you in a sec. First, I'll just trim up some of my glitter card stock. Try and not catch it on fire with my candle there. So I'm going to be die cutting out more of these cute little button embellishments. So I'll just measure for size. I don't need a whole lot, but I want enough just so it's, you know, you've got a little bit more leeway. So I just use this paper trimmer here. which is a We Are Memory Keepers um, trimmer slash scoreboard. And I find that works really well for me. Cuts through all kinds of different paper. I can even cut through my acetate as well using this, just not foam or anything hard like that, like heavy duty cardstock. So just cut that into three pieces so we can die cut out that. And I'll just grab my die cut machine. So I have my um, die cut machine. So it's just one of the um, rolly ones that I use and it's by Kayser Craft. So I've got my two plates. Keep in mind, guys, that um, I've had this die cutting machine for a few years now and my plates are starting to look a bit, ooh. <laughs> they're a bit cracked, they're a bit bent and um, yeah, I have a feeling it is going to break any second now. So I need to grab a new one and also my table might rattle a bit so the camera might move a bit um, because I do end up when I'm um, winding it it can sometimes yeah shake things up a bit so I just pop my die down and this is a really good 
really good sturdy die and I just keep it together so then I can die cut all my different buttons all at once. So it's nice and quick and easy. Let's pop my plate through. And usually I roll with my left hand actually, but I've placed it around the other way this time. So I'm going to be rolling with my right. So I'll try not to knock things. It gets a little bit tough and tight because of how bent my plate is. So I'll just show you, these come out really easily. So I find that when I'm die cutting my glitter cardstock, it works heaps better than um, my usual cardstock paper. Like they just pop out quite easily, as you can see. And with this die, sometimes I get a little bit of a, I have to pull it a little bit, but other than that, they cut out really nicely and this is a is it called a coordinations coordinations by american crafts um glitter card stock this one so these guys as you can see that has popped out beautifully so i just poke out the little um button holes so I've received a whole heap of sort of new dies recently that I've been wanting to play with I'm not using this little banner one so I won't even poke the holes out of that one and it's starting to get really gloomy and dark right now it's starting to rain so we're almost coming into our autumn weather now so you don't know what you're going to get as far as the weather goes it's like hot one day cold and rainy the next <laughs> so if the lighting's not the best i apologize and i just poke out yeah the little holes with this cute little pokey tool that my um good friend anna made for me which is gorgeous and then for if I get dies that I find are quite hard to come out, I end up using also, I have this um, Sizzix like die brush. So you can just roll it onto your dies either way, just to try and get out all the tiny little bits and pieces that are hard to remove. So we'll just go and we'll do another one. So I pop my die. Just move up the back. Like that. Place my glitter cardstock face down and the um the top of the die upwards. So as you guys can see there, that's your flat smooth bit. This is your pointier bit. So facing up, patterned paper you want facing down. And I know there's probably heaps of videos out there showing this, but um, like I said, I had a request and I sort of haven't done, I guess, a lot of die cutting on my um on my youtube channel like i already pre-cut a lot of my stuff before i film so i thought i'd do it on camera for you guys and just to show you what tools i use and what works for me so um i find that this case of craft machine just works really well and i know like this is an australian company it's a little bit dirty it's a little bit grotty <laughs> I do need to give it a good wipe over, um, but I find that 
yeah, it's a really good quality one that my husband purchased for me. So I just made a few marks there on the table. And there's our die. And as you guys can see there, it's just, yeah, it cuts out perfectly. So I'll just get this out of the way. Just move that. I have made a bit of a mess on my table. And just remove that out. And I love this die. I didn't realize I'd actually purchased two button dies recently because I ended up purchasing um, this Rosie Studio button die. And I forgot all about it. And then I went and purchased that um, this button die from AliExpress. And as you can see, it's quite, it's different. Um, I like that it has the stitching around the edges. I think that's really cute. And it's a lot more sturdier. So I found, like, I usually, I do enjoy Rosie Studio's products. But this is the first Rosie Studio die that I had purchased. And, um... I found it's quite a flimsy sort of metal that they use and they also don't have the pokey bits on the other side for you to poke out your die. So as you guys can see there, my paper is stuck in the Rosie Studio die compared to this die here that I bought. It just pops straight out. It's like so smooth and that's what I look for in dies. So... I really enjoy the quality of this one over the Rosie Studio one because this one is going to require a lot of work for me to try and get this paper out because I have like dropped it on my table. I have, there's just no way of getting the paper out. So um, my good friend Tanil Paper Milkshake, she suggested to me to use a bit of washi tape on there to try and lift it out of there so I am going to try that but um, let's just say I probably won't be using um, Rosie Studio dies anymore I prefer the dies that I get from AliExpress, Enbeads, um, Queen of Craft, um, I think it's like Co-Beads as well like I find that their dies are all um, work really well for me so I recently hauled this beautiful die as well so I might even run that through my machine because I haven't used this before just to see the quality in this die so I ended up purchasing this one from AliExpress as well and this is no way like sponsored or endorsed or anything from AliExpress. I buy everything with my own money. I just prefer, even though they take a lot longer to arrive, I prefer the quality. And the price as well. The price is amazing. Another good dye actually is... Um, there's an Australian company that do good dyes, which I've purchased from them a few times. Um, I think it's Paper Rose. Yeah, Paper Roses. They um, do really good dyes as well that come out nice and clean and easy. So I've just poked out my little bits and pieces there. And sorry, I'm just going to have a quick cup of tea. <laughs> Mm. So this is like a carrot cake um, flavoured tea by T2, which was um, sent to me by my friend Ebony. We did like a little tea swap recently because we're both tea lovers and we both love T2. And I hadn't tried the, um, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get my die cut machine. I'm a little bit far away because I'm quite short. There we go. So I hadn't tried the um, the carrot cake flavoured tea before from 
tea too and it's really nice it's got like little hints of spices and um but is it like cinnamon and it's a little sweet as well but not too sweet just slightly so it's yummy so i might try i'll see if this fits i don't know if i've cut that too small or not but i wanted to try this new dye out it might be a little bit Let's see, sometimes you can just maneuver it around so it fits. We're going to try that and hopefully it doesn't move on me. You can use washi tape to hold things down if you don't want it moving. But I tend to just wing it. <laughs> dye as you can see there oh it like cuts out all the bits in between and then it just leaves you with let's just try and get this off gently How pretty so you can either keep some of the oh it cuts out I see so some of the pieces stay hollow and the other bits just pop out so I can even just poke those bits out with my hand there and look at that how gorgeous has that turned out I'll just get up on my stool remove this rid of the junk and I'll just show you guys how beautiful that cut out it's so lovely look at that how that turned out it's so nice and this would be perfect for layering on the back of some embellishments. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to grab a couple of our little glitter pieces that I die cut out using this gorgeous die. And I'm going to stick glue down some of these pretty um, pieces here so we have the hearts stars circle pieces I'll remove these little banner ones because I might end up just creating maybe just fun little banner embellishments using those so let's see what colors and patterns we've got and then we are going to glue them onto the glitter cardstock so what do i do with my tea Okay, so I ended up using this um, Aileen's Turbo Tacky Glue um, to glue. For example, we're going to, I'll just show you, add a little bit of the glue onto the glitter cardstock. 
I find this sticks really well. I can grab a coloured, like patterned cardstock, and you just place it slightly to the side so you get a little bit of that glitter cardstock just poking through there. Like that. So I hope you guys can see that. And I find that adheres really well. And then you can just pop some thread through the middle there. So we'll do that one. Let's do a circle. You just need a little bit, not a whole lot of glue. So we'll do, let's do pink. Make sure it's facing the right way too, so you can pop your thread through um, the loops there. It's a perfect day for crafting. Gloomy, rainy, but almost, oh, I would say it's a little bit muggy, but not too bad. But it's the perfect day to craft indoors and have a cup of tea and my beautiful red skins scented candle, which is made by a 10 year old entrepreneur here in Australia, like from Andy um, Candle Co. It's like amazing. I can't believe a 10 year old is making candles and they smell so good. So many creative people out there. Let's do this pretty simple stories one here. I love all the different shapes and like I said I love that it has that almost stitched look embossed into the die and then it goes onto the paper it's like so pretty I hope my camera is focusing because I can't actually see guys because I'm really down below sort of sitting on my stool so um, we've done that we've done that we've done that one Let's just do a few more. Feel free to, you know, fast forward if you find that this is boring you. But I know that some people like to just sit there and do some crafting and like sort of watch while they craft and they find it quite relaxing. So that's sort of why I tend to do all kinds of um, variety of what I put out on my YouTube channel. So I try to do a little bit of everything for everyone if I can. So there's another one. And then I'll just show you guys what I do. Then with these pieces, I'll just move them to the side a bit, like how I popped that that thread through um, those two. It does take a little bit of time. Okay, so you want to get your whatever thread you have you could use I just decided to use gold because I just love using gold on pretty much most of my projects so you just need to trim a little bit off oh I can hear my tummy rumbling and then you just grab one of the button pieces with the glitter cardstock and you just thread it through a little hole there and it probably would be easier if you did end up using a um, a needle oh can you guys hear the rain now it's pouring and I just wrap it through 
just using my fingers hoping that the thread doesn't separate sometimes it does you have to give it just a little bit of a like a lick <laughs> I know that sounds really gross but I find if you put it between your lips um, it helps it the cotton go through And sorry, the other noise that you can probably hear as well is my um, daughter playing games at the, at the computer. So let's just see how we get that one through. Hope you guys can see and that it's in focus. My cotton has separated a little bit. So ideally, if you have plenty of time and you just want to sit and relax and thread your cotton through, you can. Um, it's quite relaxing. It can be a little time consuming. So like I said, if you end up grabbing yourself a, um, a needle and to do the threading it would be a lot quicker than just sitting here doing it like this and then I end up getting it all sort of knotted up in a way because my thread ended up separating on me so I just keep sort of pulling it through until I get it sort of right and you don't need to do a whole lot it's just enough um, you know, until you're happy with the outcome. So I'm going to try and poke it through once more. Hoping that all the thread goes through, not just one. Oh, let me check. I just had to try and get it together again. Come on. And the problem is like my hands are really shaky now too, guys. Um, like quite often I have like little sort of tremors and I can't get my hands working. So ideally it would be better if you used like a needle. to do this. So there we go. So I've got my thread on there. So then um, I just end up tying it in a knot, a double knot. Just so I know it's going to stay on. Try not to pull too tight. You don't want it to um, tear your paper. But that's the good point of having, you know, your glitter card stock in the background because it makes it a lot more sturdier. So there we go. So I just, yeah, double knot. And then I trim the little bit of excess off the back. I do leave a tiny little bit of cotton just in case you need to pull it a little bit tighter because you don't want it coming apart and then I'm going to just be adding some cute little like um, um what was I going to say dots like foam dots or foam adhesive excuse my fingers they're falling apart I think I've got glue on them as well so there we go I hope you guys can see I know it was a little bit hard because I was so far down, but you can just see that gold glitter cardstock sparkling through with that little tiny bits of gold thread. And 
they turn out super pretty. So that's that one. And I'll just show you again. Actually, we'll just do it like this. This one looks like it's starting to come apart, but if it has a little bit of thread sticking out, it's not so bad because, I mean, that's how buttons can end up looking. Just gives it that bit of that messy, rustic button look. But overall, I think they are really cute embellishments to give to your pen pals. And, you know, they're not hard to do. There's something quite easy something relaxing to do on a gloomy rainy day so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful um and yeah take care guys and i'll catch you on the next one bye